Uh, yeah, my talk is called Making Connections, uh, the Joy of Organizing the Local Community. And I came up with that topic because I, at some point, realized that I've been organizing WordPress meetups for more than 10 years. And I felt very old for a second, and then I started working on that slide. Um, this is me, I'm Simon. I've been around the WordPress space for quite some time. I started as a developer back in 2008. Um, was at my first WordCamp in 2011. A year after that, I organized my first meetup in Frankfurt. And I never really stopped. Uh, I co-founded five meetups over the years, and I'm just about to do the sixth one later this year. Uh, I co-organized two WordCamps, working on the third one, WordCamp Germany, coming up in five weeks from now. Um, I did one Do Action event, and for those of you who don't know the Do Action Hackathon format, it's brilliant. Try it out. Try it at your local community. Um, and since earlier this year, I'm with Group One and work at uh, WH1 as a senior product owner with a lovely team here in Finland. Well, let's take a look at uh, my first. Uh, my, my tips are brilliant, by the way. <laughs> My first tip for you, if you want to organize a meetup or restart a meetup that's maybe went a little bit down during COVID, you know, uh, is to just go for it. Um, and I know it's a stupid idea, but just do it. Uh, this, by the way, is the, uh, oh, it's, you can't see it really good. It's uh, a photo of the first meetup, and, and the only photo I have left of my very first meetup. Someone printed out a sign. It wasn't me, it was someone else. So let's talk about the minimum requirements uh, you have to meet. You have to be like one plus N people to have a meetup. It's really enough if it's just you there. I mean, it's not fun. You have to spend an hour or two by yourself, but other people will come. Um, you have to set, set, a, set a date and time and find a proper venue for it. And then it's also like good to send out invites because then people know about your meetup. Uh, back in the day, this was our original invite. It's in German. Don't try to read it. Um, we had to do it on our own. Now we have meetup.com. We have the widget on everyone's WordPress dashboard. So that's way easier today. So this was the minimum requirements. Now, if you want to organize a meetup, just leave this session. Go and do it. But I will go into a bit more detail now. Uh, with regards to preparations, um, what do you have to do up front? It's good to find co-organizers. I know that from painful experience, I've did this on my own for years, um, having other people you can rely on and that you can share like the burden of organizing a monthly meetup is very useful. Uh, also, I found many, many good friends. My friend Casper uh, back in 2012 was like, yeah, just meet the people. You will find great friends for life. And he, uh, he was right. It's really true. Uh, find a fixed date and invite a speaker or many speakers, multiple speakers. Usually having a topic for a night helps attracting people, especially if you're new. Uh, send out invites. We had that on the earlier slide as well. And if you want to, and if your location allows for that, try to prepare recordings like we do at WordCamps. Uh, you can upload them to WordPress TV later or to a YouTube channel if you want to. And that's usually a good way to like, include people who are not able to attend that day, or want to rewatch a part of the presentation. If you want to do some hypercare stuff, um, you can go for it. You don't have to. That's strictly optional. Um, there's a comment section on meetup.com. And at least for our meetups, usually people are like, oh, when do we actually start? When can we get into the venue? How do we get there? It's super good to answer those questions because people will feel more welcome. We like that. We love people to feel welcome at our events. Also, many people don't know about the ratings feature on meetup.com. Uh, if you attended a meetup, meetup.com asks you about how did you like it? And you can give a one to five star rating. You can also say, oh, I was very, um, very friendly group. I learned something new, stuff like that. Um, and if you've organized a meetup, take a look like a week or two afterwards into this section on meetup.com because sometimes there's very good feedback in there positive and constructive feedback as well. If you have a blog, either your own or maybe something for your meetup especially, write a blog post in there. Uh, tell people what happened during your meetups. Write a small recap or something. 
And if you record it, of course, upload the video because just recording it doesn't help anyone. Venue. Oh, that's a big one. Um, venues shape the way your meetup works. Um, my very first meetup in Frankfurt, we were at a small private university in a part of town called Preungesheim. Who of you has heard of Frankfurt Preungesheim? Such a surprise. I lived in Frankfurt back in the time, and even I haven't heard of that place. There's a big jail, uh, and you have to take a train like half an hour out there. There was four people, the four organizers, and we were amongst ourselves for about a year, <laughs> because no one cared to get out there. And then we moved over to a bar, which is a completely different setting. So it was not as spacious, there wasn't a screen, a nice projector, we don't have like all the room to ourselves. But there was food and drinks, and that attracted more people. And then we graduated to like an agency where we had their office to go off on. So different settings shape the way your meetup is perceived. Uh, you could have like a school setting with some presenting in the front, more like a workshop discussion thing going on, or like eating with friends. And I know in Spain and Italy, this is very popular. This is a picture from before the pandemic, my meetup in Stuttgart. Uh, we regularly hosted about 100 people, and in the slow months, 60 to 70. And uh, we had a speaker and some action going on in the front. So requirements for your venue, um, accessibility, it's a big thing. Try to find a space where people with wheelchairs or who well, have a problem seeing stuff properly can get in and have a good time. A central location usually is good, like near a central station, or if you're not central, uh, don't go for Frankfurt Poingesheim, but maybe something where pe people can actually get to easily, like a train stop or two outside of city center. Your room should have a suitable size. Uh, our meetup grew quite rapidly, and we were in a co-working space in the meantime, with space for about 15 people. Try fitting 50 people in there. It's really hard, and it's not a good time for everyone, so find a proper size for your, for your meetup. The price also is an issue. I know the WordPress Foundation pays for venue expenses, but I don't think they do that indefinitely. So finding a free or cheap venue is usually a good idea. Or finding a company sponsoring that, which is also a nice thing. Good sources, usually bars, universities, public libraries, companies, living rooms. Do you know that the very first meetup ever held was in Matt Malwick's personal living room? If you're comfortable with that, do it. <laughs> uh, on formats, uh, we have quite a lot of different options. Uh, I already said in Germany, we usually have like speakers, presentations, stuff like that. But a panel, a discussion, something we call site clinics, where people bring in their websites and the organizers or some long-time WordPress users that are around can help them. Um, that's just the beginning of that list. You can do way, way, way more if you have like ideas to do stuff. Some examples, uh, as I said, our very big meetup in, in Stuttgart. Uh, that's a plain front presentation. Uh, the meetup in Munich, uh, they drink lots of beer and have pretzels quite regularly. I love that. Um, and then we have sometimes panel discussions as well, so just some ideas. During COVID, we had to switch to online. And that was hard, because online meetups are a different story. Um, so that was mostly presentations, and then people just left afterwards, because you cannot socialize like you can at an in-person event. So it's very good that we can like get back to that. That's another stupid advice, but it's an important one. Um, hang in there, especially if you start a new group or restart something after it went dormant for a while. Um, it's quite hard. At one of my own meetups that was during COVID, it was inactive and we just restarted it a couple of months ago. Last month, there was just one other visitor. And that's fine. I can totally live with that. Um, back in the day in Frankfurt, we had a meetup during a blizzard and I was the only one attending, and I knew that, but I, want, I wanted to be there just in case someone else shows up. So prepare for that mentally, and then it's fine. You can, you can manage to be around for like an hour or two. Um, 
especially at the beginning, consistency is key. Like have a set date, have a set venue. Don't switch around venues over town from month to month. And don't try fancy stuff like, oh, we do this once a quarter, every other month. Experience shows usually it doesn't work. Maybe your locale is different, but in general, people have a hard time remembering stuff for more than a month, unfortunately. And as I said, just show up. Just be there, just be around, and help people if they need your help. So in conclusion, I quoted my good friend Mahatma Gandhi, uh, be the meetup you want to see in the world. Um, you cannot do something wrong, actually. Every single meetup is different. Um, I travel around quite a lot. I visit many, many meetups, and not two of them are the same. Some are drinking lots of beer. Others are in Frankfurt Poingesheim. It doesn't matter. It's about your local community and about you like organizing that. Uh, the second one, don't get caught in perfectionism. I wrote that down for me because I tend to do that. I tend to organize the perfect meetup. Do not even try that shit. Just go there, do it. And don't forget that the most important thing about your meetup is the people. And you want to give them a good time, you want to make sure they come back next time. Um, speaking of perfectionism, uh, three final examples. Uh, the community in Glasgow um, printed some roll-ups uh, that are so generic, actually, that they can use them for everything. That was at their WordCamp, but they use them at their meetups regularly. Um, in the upper left corner, uh, that's my meetup. We had, at some point, taken over the digital signage system at our venue. We had like dozens of screens showing, what's up next, our room sponsor, um, this way to the toilets, stuff like that. We had a lot of fun with that. Obviously, that was powered by WordPress. And in the lower left corner, uh, that's a failed experiment of mine. Um, I tried starting a hybrid WooCommerce meetup. Hybrid meetups are so hard because people like the online part, but no one cares to show up for the in-person stuff. So we just scrapped that and went for only in-person meetups um, with that group. Unfortunately, I would have loved to have a hybrid, a hybrid meetup. Um, that's it. Thank you so much. If you have any questions regarding like meetup, meetup organization or stuff, uh, approach me. I'm yeah. here for the rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you.